Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Hey wife, did you know that Anchor is sponsoring our show? Really? Don't we use Anchor to distribute our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts? Yeah, and we are on just about every other platform available as well, thanks to them. Why do we use Anchor as our podcasting service? Well, they make editing and distributing our show a breeze. What if one of our listeners wants to start their own podcast? Then they should head over to anchor.fm or download the app to get started. Awesome! You guys should go do that right now! Husband! Wife! Do you remember what happened last Friday? Uh, some of David's dudes got bad haircuts and then I went off about Supercut. Great clips. Some of the, One of those places. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was actually on Thursday. Friday was, oh. they were fighting a lot. And they did fighting and they fought and they won. Oh, well, shit. Yeah, they I didn't won. Remember. They won. Yay, they win. It, like, the section was literally called the defeat of the Ammonites and Syrians. Got it, got it. Yeah, so I, they I extended remember. extended miss- their land. Was, that was kind of boring, maybe? It was. Like, okay, maybe it that's was. why I was like, we were on the other one or something. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Okay, so that was Second Samuel chapter 10? Yep. And now we're on 2 Samuel chapter 11. All right, let's go read this. Let's do it. Oh my God, you're going to be so excited when I tell you the title of this one. Am I now? Yeah. Okay. What do you keep saying is is going to happen and that you keep hearing about? Bathsheba. 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 Oh, man. This is called David and Bathsheba. Oh, man. Are you excited? I am excited, actually. I know. Who There's the fuck been, is like, she? Everybody's like, just wait till you read Bathsheba. 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 No. <laughs> bada bing, bada bing. Yeah. Okay, so ready? So Bathsheba. Yeah. Okay. In the spring of the year when kings normally go out to war, David... Wait, hold on. <laughs> in the spring of the year when kings normally yeah. go out to It's just like a thing. Oh, oh yeah. it's wartime. Let's go normally go out to war. Well, they can't fight in winter. Hello. Okay. In spring is when babies are born and we go to war. So, we so war things. is a seasonal thing, huh? Yes. Okay. Of course. All right. That's when I always go to war. Isn't that when you go to war? Yeah, I mean, harvest... Um, is in you know, fall, right? And then there's you know winter, and then spring, and then and then wartime. Yeah, obviously. Duh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in the spring of the year, when kings normally go to war, okay, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. Okay. You know, remember that just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure you. I were mean, they've been, they've been fighting this whole fucking time, so. Right, but the Ammonites, like they right. literally just were killing the Ammonites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. They it. destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city of Rabbah. Rabbah? I don't know. Rabbah. Right. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Oh, this spells trouble. Right here in River City. Or Jerusalem. Or Jerusalem. Late one afternoon after uh, his midday rest. Oh, okay. You know, his siesta. Yep, yep. Um, I have to interrupt myself because I just have been reading. There's uh, this... this um, Oh, what's it called? Like a fad going around? Okay. It's it's a question that I've seen on Twitter, and I guess it originated on TikTok, but everybody's asking it. What are and they asking? I'm getting there. Okay. The question is, what are some uh, things that we believe that weren't always true that we just take for granted as oh, having always yeah, been yeah. that way? I've seen those. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's just been within the past month that I've started seeing it like everywhere. Right. Yeah. And one of them was second sleep, which we've talked, you and I have talked about what second sleep used to be. Right. um, Which is we used to um, go to sleep sleep when, uh, you know, it got dark. Right. And then we would sleep like maybe four to six hours and then get up and by candlelight do a bunch more stuff. Yeah. And then go to sleep again. Sure. And 
um, it might be like midday siesta, right? Okay. And that was um, supposed to be when we changed our sleep pattern that way. It was when the industrial Reuven, blah, 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 industrial revolution. revolution came around. Yeah. And it was our compromise to only have to work eight hours a day. Right. But which that's how the 40 hour work week came into play. Okay. And um, we're actually much tireder and we sleep much less effectively and we work much less effectively. But if we didn't make that compromise um, with corporations and, and powers that be and whatever. Yeah. Um, we'd be working all hours, like 12-hour days or 24-hour days or whatever, okay. and never get any rest. But um, anyway, I just found it interesting that they're referring to a midday rest, and, you know, we used to have that. And yeah. not we, like America. America never had that, but just people in general used to have this second rest. Right. Nap right. time, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I wish we still had it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. That's all. Okay. I thought you were telling me that wasn't true, but I was like... No. Like, okay, so... No, we take the eight-hour work day and the 40-hour work week as a thing that we've been bamboozled into believing right. that it's always been that way and that that's normal and good. But it hasn't. Yeah. Right. Right. I know. And it's bad for us. Right. That's all. Okay. So you were looking at me like I was weird. Well, no, you were like, saying things that we take for granted that we... And, and I was like... I already know about second sleep, so what am I taking for granted? We people of the world take for granted that this is a thing, not we, you, got husband. It. Right. Okay. Like, you're not the end all be all of no, the world. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. So, okay. I, just, I didn't know where you were going with it. That's all. Yeah. Well, I was going that I wish we had siesta. That's all. Okay. All right. So, late one afternoon after his midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace, as, as, yeah. as you do. Probably has battlement, you know? It better have battlement, so otherwise it's... You could get, you he's know, gonna become get a murderer. in trouble or when die, somebody falls. Fall off, you know? Yeah, and right. then somebody else will have murdered him. Right. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty <laughs> taking a bath. Oh, wow. Chick, bow, wow. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. he saw her nakedness. That's why he's up on the fucking roof. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> he's like, I see you and you and you. Yeah. Right? He sent one someone to find out who she was, because that's what you do when you see a beautiful naked woman. Yeah, and you're king. And you send somebody out to say, who you? It's good to be king. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was told she is Bathsheba, the daughter of It's Ibium. funny she was taking a bath and her name is Bathsheba. That is funny. So. That is funny. So, I know. And also in the Canterbury Tales, there's uh, someone who is named the um, Lady of Bath. Mm, okay. Yeah. So there's all these baths lying around right. everywhere. Yeah. She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Mm. What, whoa. That's, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Then David sent messengers to get her. What? He sent messengers to get but her. But she's already fucking married. He wants her. She's beautiful. The king gets what he wants. His dick speaks. This does not sound very biblical. It doesn't sound... It does sound not sound very godly. No, it doesn't sound like a good thing to do, right? You're stealing some dude's wife? You're so beautiful. I have to fuck you. I have to fuck you right now. He's already got how many fucking wives, too? Not enough. Jeez. He sees this woman, and men are so incapable of controlling themselves, he has to fuck her. Right. Okay? Yeah. Don't you understand? I mean, she was taking a bath, you know? She was taking a bath, and she's beautiful, <laughs> and you see a naked, beautiful woman, you are not responsible for your behavior. You have to fuck them. Right, right. That's yeah. what men would have you believe. Not okay. you, man. Right. And hopefully no men listening to this podcast. Right. But men of the world, that's that's what we're supposed to believe, that they are nothing better than fucking apes. And right. And piece of shit animals that have no control of their instincts, and they're like beautiful woman i have to fuck even if it means rape i don't care right my needs of fucking come first above yeah. all else i have to fuck god damn it yeah which is fine i don't know why they're considered humans if they have to fuck that hard i don't know why they don't get their driver's license taken away like you can't have it both ways in my book mm -hmm. are you an animal that has to fuck and can't control yourself that's fine you don't get a car, you don't get a job, you don't get a license, you don't get to vote because you're an animal. Right. Got it. Or you can control yourself and then you get to vote. Okay. That's what I think. All right. 
Anyway, when she came to the palace, because she doesn't have a fucking choice, because women are just vessels for fuck. Right. He slept with her. Hmm. Because, of course. That, again, I gotta point this out. Mm-hmm. Dude's with God, right? Mm-hmm. Dude, the God loves this guy, right? God loves Ray. He's all about David. God loves Ray. And he just goes and, and takes this woman from her husband. Mm-hmm. Because she was having a bath while he was on the roof of his goddamn it's castle. what she gets for being beautiful. It's what she gets for having a vagina. And takes her and sleeps with it's her. It's her own fucking fault. She shouldn't have been beautiful or taken a <laughs> bath or have a vagina. Wow. That's yeah. a bunch of shit. That is a bunch of shit. And it says she slept with he slept with her. But I'm going to say that's a euphemism for he gave her absolutely no option and he fucking fucked her and he right. raped her. Right. I'm, she had just completed the purification rites after having her menstrual period. Ah. That's important. That, yeah. I mean, because you got to make sure that you're not, you know, um, unclean. That's, that's why she was that's bathing. That's important. But, you know, stealing her from his husband and, and then, you know, raping her, that's okay. So she was a disgusting piece of shit because she just finished having her period. Right. She was cleaning up and saying, I'm sorry, I'm such a disgusting piece of shit for doing this natural thing that happens to women, which is menstruate. Please forgive me for being a disgusting menstruating piece of shit. Right. And then she's beautiful and gets raped. Yeah. Awesome. Then she returned home. Later, when Bathsheba discovered that she was pregnant, <laughs> she sent David a message saying, I'm pregnant. Oh, okay. I guess that she had not fucked her husband. Right. During that time. He was probably off at war. Or something, yeah. That's, or, probably, that's probably a good point, yeah. Yeah. So she's like, you're the one that raped me. Yeah. So probably yours. Right. I mean, I am beautiful, so somebody else may have raped me also, but you're the king. But he, king, just, he so literally with slept you. with her and just sent her home. Yeah. that's, And obviously it didn't have anything to do with her for a while because mm-hmm. she found out she was pregnant and sent a note to him. And it's she had like, just finished her period. Yeah. So this meant that this is at least a month later, assuming she had a normal cycle. Right, right. Didn't see her for a fucking month, so, at least. So David was like, that one, and then and sent her And forgot about her. Right, yeah. It was at least a month. I'm going to guess it was probably a couple months before she realized, oh, fuck me. Right. right uh, yeah. Literally. Right. I am pregnant. Then David sent word to Joab. Um, oopsie doodle. Send me Uriah the Hittite. Is this guy going to die? Husband? Because. Probably. Because David's This is David's dumb. A I'm not liking this. Shit. I'm not liking this story. I'm clearly not liking it either, if you can't tell from my. Right. My tone. I'm just saying. Like. So Joab sent him to David. When Uriah arrived, David asked him how Joab and the army were getting along and how the war was progressing. Do, 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 do. You know, hey, you want a drink? Yeah. Let's chit chat. Right. How's the weather? How's that beautiful hussy wife of yours? Uh-huh. Oh, then he told Uriah, go on home and relax. Okay. David even sent a gift to Uriah after he had left the palace. So he didn't. Okay. All right. All right. He's okay, like, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm waiting to hear how this plays he's out. He's a liar and a disgusting right? human being. Yeah, no, he's I'm like, sneak. what the fuck is going on here? But Uriah didn't go home. He slept that night at the palace entrance with the king's palace guard. Why? I don't know. That's weird. Maybe it Why was... would you sleep at the castle entrance, the palace entrance? I don't know. It doesn't say, but I'm going to guess that maybe um, the house was too far or maybe okay. he wanted to bathe first or I don't know. Okay. He just right. didn't go straight home. Maybe sure. he stopped for a beer. Right. I don't yeah. know. Really, it's none of our fucking business. True. Right? True. True. When David heard that Uriah had not gone home, he summoned him and asked, what's the matter? Why didn't you go home last night after being away for so long? Uriah replied, the ark and the armies of Israel and Judah are living in tents and Joab and my master's men are camping in the open fields. How could I go home to wine and dine and sleep with my wife? Oh my gosh. He's a he good was guy. Trying, he was, yeah, but he, but David was trying to send him home so that he could be like, oh, that's your kid. Yeah, hurry up and go fuck. Right. Hurry, hurry, go yeah. fuck. Quick, yeah. quick, 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 quick. Right. Yeah. I swear that I would never do such a thing, said Uriah. So Uriah is not only Bathsheba's wife, he's actually a really good guy. Yeah. You done fucked up, David. Right, right. Well, stay here today, David told him, and tomorrow you may return to the army. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem that day and the next. Then David invited him to dinner and got him drunk. But even then, he couldn't get Uriah to go home to his wife. (laughs) Oh, my God. David, you're so disgusting and I hate you. Wow. Again, he slept at the palace entrance with the king's palace guard. So the next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and gave it to Uriah to deliver. 
The letter instructed Joab, station Uriah on the front lines where the battle is fiercest. Oh my God. He's going to try to get this guy killed. So he's not going to kill him himself, but he's like, I'm going to get him killed. Jesus. What a horrible human being. Right. Then pull back so that he will be killed. That oh my God. Like he literally says it out wow. loud. Wow. Um, I tried to pawn this child off on Jesus. this guy, but he's entirely too decent. So instead, I just need to kill this decent man. What a fucking... I mean... I hate David. Period. Yeah. The end. Period I'm sorry, the end. but like... Okay. Oh, Take this, responsibility for your rape, my guy. Like, I haven't thought David's been a good guy the whole time, but this is like extra bad. This, this is, is This is horrible. I hate him. He's a horrible human being. Yeah. So... Joab assigned Uriah to a spot close to the city wall where he knew the enemy's strongest men were fighting. And when the enemy soldiers came out of the city to fight, Uriah the Hittite was killed along with several other Israelite soldiers. Why didn't you just fucking kill him yourself, you pussy? Jackass. Piece of shit. Right? Wimp. Coward. Like, come on. Nasty. Nasty like, you ass can't, jerk. You can't do it yourself, so you just you send him where you know he's going to die. Right. And he was a decent... Yeah. Soldier. He was a good man. And all because man. you can't own up to what you did. Yeah. I mean, seriously? Like, you should not have been raping people in the first place. Right, yeah. And then you got her knocked up, and that should have been the price you pay. And instead, right. you shot your own self in the foot in order to not get caught at what you did. Yeah. Then Joab sent a battle report to David. He told his messenger to report all the news of the battle to the king. But he might get angry and ask, why did the troops go so close to the city? Didn't they know there would be shooting from the walls? Wasn't Abimelech, son of Gideon, killed at Thebes by a woman who threw a millstone down on him from the wall? <laughs> Why would you get so close to the wall? So then tell him Uriah the Hittite was killed too. So he's like, he's like basically saying, look, tell David that all these guys died. But then when he is like, why did all these guys die? Just make sure that you tell him, but Uriah was among them. Right. That so makes it all better. We lost a whole bunch of men needlessly because for no fucking reason. Because you couldn't own up reason, to your fucking mistake. But Uriah was among them, so that's yeah. okay. Oh, boy, that solved that problem mm, for you, David. Yay. I hate David. So the messenger went to Jerusalem and gave a complete report to David. The enemy came out against us in the open fields, he said. And as we chased them back to the city gate, the archers on the wall shot arrows at us. Some of the king's men were killed, <gasps> including Uriah the Hittite. <laughs> well, tell Joab not to be discouraged, David said. Right. The sword devours this one day and that one tomorrow. Fight harder next time and conquer the city. Whatever. He was fucking elated. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, good job. He got rid of that guy for me. Oof. Man, Yay, that, was, me. that was a close one. Yeah, I was almost about to get caught out for raping this right? decent man's wife. But why would you put this in the fucking Bible? Why? I mean, like David's supposed to be like God's dude, it's right? It's to show us that he fell away from God and made poor choices. I and guess I'm gonna guess that he gets punished for his. Bad I bet behavior. he fucking doesn't. But okay. I don't know. We'll I mean, see. almost everything that's in the Bible is supposed to be a lesson of some kind. I guess. Okay. When Uriah's were worf wife heard that her husband was dead she mourned for him when the period of mourning was over david sent for her and brought her to the palace she became one of his wives of course she oh, did oh how decent of him right that's good yeah and she became one of his wives then she gave birth to a son but the lord was displeased with what david had done the end oh oh mm. okay mm. all right yeah i bet he was yeah right um because he raped that girl. And then got people and killed got to cover it up. And got people killed, including that girl's wife, right. husband. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. This uh, was gross and I hate it. Definitely. And I hope David gets his testicles pulled off. <laughs> I have no sympathy for rapists, so right. I hope he gets his testicles pulled off slowly. Yeah. And popped. Right. And then right. he has to swallow them. Oh, man. That's, uh, that's well, disgusting. I have no sympathy for rapists. I know. You said that. I just want to <laughs> say it again. He's a fucking monkey-ass piece of shit. Right. The end. All right. Well, that was uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow we'll be back for a cheery episode of 2 Samuel chapter, chapter 12. All to right. find out if David punishes, or if David gets punished. Yeah, if his balls get chopped off. Whee! Hey, wife. I guess that's the end. 
But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.